Sunday at 6, Wednesday at 11 is Janice's funeral here. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are our after school program and our community prayer will be at Shady Pine this week. Um, November 15th will be our annual community Thanksgiving ser service at Upper Path. Hope, hope a lot of you can go to that one. Um, shoe boxes, to send a shoe box this year is going to cost $9 for every shoe box. If you're interested in helping fund that, uh, the offering plate's in the back and you can place an offering back there for it. Yeah. Yeah, for uh, Janice's funeral on Wednesday, I talked to Connie because they're going to have a luncheon over at the fire hall. Uh, she needs five more cakes. I'm going to do one, so I, I told her I would see if I could get four more ladies. I know Grace is doing one. If I could get four more ladies to volunteer to do a cake, a shoe cake, for Janice's uh, funeral dinner, you would either raise your hand now or tell them. Some of you might want to get up and hug somebody, but that's okay. Just do whatever. Just do whatever. I didn't get your message. In your bulletins, if you stand, please.
give you thanks and praise this morning because you are worthy. Thank you, Thank you for Jesus. Yes. Thank you for the blood covering of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that when you look at us, you see the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You see not what we used to be, but you see who we are because yes. of him. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you, Father, as we gather this morning to give you the praise and the glory. Thank you that your Holy Spirit's here. Thank you, Father, that you move by your precious Holy Spirit. And just open us up, Father, to receive and to give you the glory and the praise. And we'll give you the honor. And it's all because of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Glory. Praise Glory. Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah. And it will make you sick. I mean, people think that babies don't feel pain or they don't know what's going on. Well, this movie proves to you that they do. <coughs> it will show you on the ultrasound machine that uh, they're going to abortion and they're putting that probe up there to tear that baby apart. That baby will pull away trying to avoid those probes. Okay, anybody else? Anybody have something on a more positive note? <laughs> the reality is, is that, you know, that is a reality. Well, the way I can pray, God, don't give us what we deserve, give us what we need. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I did hear a good story last week. Do you know I was asked to do a hundred face masks for child evangelism? The big money people met in, um, I don't remember the name of the place, but it's owned by Franklin Graham. They were having a retreat, and these people were going to be asked to donate money, so she wanted a mask that had, it's called a wordless file. Each color means something else, and I don't remember all the names, but the colors are yellow, black, red, white, and green, and they have to be in that order. <clears throat> and I did the 100 masks. I had less than a month to get them done. Huh? And they were done last Monday. And I gave them to the lady. She had already seen some of them. And she was very pleased with them. And then she told me, she said, this is why I'm using these masks. Each person that's there will get one. And she said that there was a man in a missionary in Bangladesh who was told he could go back to Korea because because of the pandemic, you know, he couldn't do any teaching. So instead of doing that, he went to a friend of his that makes that was a factory that had to shut down for the same reason. And he said, Can you make me a thousand masks? And this guy said, sure, no problem. And he brought his people back and he made a thousand. Then he made a hundred thousand. And before it was over, he made 350,000 masks that were given individually to children with a little bit of Bible. <coughs> so they were still able to run their story. I thought that was terrific. You know? Amen. Amen. <laughs> And if you don't know, gold is heaven, or God loves you. Black is our sin and separates us from God. Red is the blood of Jesus. Okay? White is the covering that Jesus gives us because of his robes of righteousness. And green is for to grow in grace. Okay? I couldn't remember I was with kids for a long time. That's uh, Anything else? Remember, the longer you speak, the less I do. <laughs> no, my parents are settled in and um, everything's going well. Good. Yeah. Good. Praise the Lord. Thankful for the rain we received. Yeah. I have a phrase I um, talked to Debbie Flinders' husband, Bill, this morning on my way up here. And Debbie's surgery went well. Mm -hmm. She is in good spirits. Um, has a lot of pain, but she, she's doing very well. We talked to her yesterday. Yeah, she's doing well. Yeah, pray for her because I haven't gone through with that. Yeah. It was a real struggle for me. So really, really pray for her. She's going to need God's strength and joy to help her get through it. Anybody else? If this is, wait, this is my last week of academy, and I have to get maze and taste, taste and everything this week. So, oh, wow. So remember, remember Lisa, she gets mazed and tased. <laughs> and, and probably and a variety of other things she'll get. She will, she will be encountering a lot of stuff this week. So remember her as she go, yeah. goes through training. Well, let us uh, sing for all the saints.
this morning. Expecting to be there about a week, week and a half. Let's pray. Father, we just give you thanks and praise as we lift up these uh, intercessory prayers for you. Father, we thank you that in the name of Jesus, nothing's impossible with you. Father, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. And we know, Father, because of answers we've already heard and seen. That you're still in control. Yes. Thank Jesus, you're still Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we give you the thanks and the praise in advance, Father. We lift up also our military personnel and all of the uh, first responders for our police force. Father, for for our fire our firemen and fire ladies, Father, that the power of your presence would be with them. Surround them. Comfort them. Give them the realization, Father, that you are still with them, even in the struggles that they go through. Those who are in harm's way today, Father, put that hedge of protection around them. Father, those who don't know you, may this day be the day that someone will share Jesus with them just right that they would receive him as their Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you for their willingness to serve. We thank you that because of what they do, we can walk in freedom and we can walk in safety. And so we give you the thanks. Father, we... With this election coming up this this week, Father, we still know that you're still in control. Yes. You have the ultimate answer. And Father, we thank you and we praise you in advance that you are going to do that which you have proposed. You raise up and you take down, and we're going to trust you. Father, we thank you for the privilege in this country to vote, to select those people who will indeed rule us. Father, for those who that are in authority that have no relationship with you, don't know you personally, and certainly don't know Jesus, that maybe today would be that day. Maybe somehow, some way, they would walk by a, a, a Bible-believing church and just step in the doors and, Father, find Jesus. Find them. Father, we give you thanks for those who are willing to serve, but, Father, we know we need you to be in charge of our leaders once again so that we can be that one nation under you. Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us in this country. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that both Jew and Arab would come to recognize and realize Jesus is their true peace, and that only through him can they really find that genuine peace that passes all understanding. Father, thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. And it's all because of Jesus. And it's in his name we join our hearts together and pray the prayer he's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's receive our morning ties and offerings.
done the words of the doxology. Thanks for these gifts of tithes and offerings. Use them for your glory. Touch someone's life for Jesus. And we give you the praise in his name. Amen. Amen. Would she like to come down? Would you like to come down? Yeah, come on down. Come down, sit down. Yeah. Kind of good to see another... Another face down here. How are you? What's your name? Lily. She's the Lily of the Valley. It's good to have you with us. Yes. Is that your muscle ball? Yeah. Oh, it does. What's well, not? It's just staying there. Ah, it can change colors. Do you change colors? No? <laughs> um, do you know what a saint is? Well, you listen carefully today because I'm going to tell you what a saint is. But a saint is a very special person. A saint is someone who believes in Jesus. Well, then you're a saint. Yep. There you go. You didn't even know that. Now, I have a feeling that there are times in which she's probably not as saintly as she should be. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Well, look around you. Everybody else fits that same, yeah. same category. That's right. But that's one of the things that God calls us when we come to faith in Jesus. And I'll be sharing about that this morning. I just wanted you to come down so they could see your beautiful little face. And my wife back there in the black black blouse has something for you. So you go this way, she'll give it to you. Let me pray with you first. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for Lily's coming forth and willing to come down this yes, morning. Just you, bless Jesus. her in a special way. In Jesus' yep. name, amen. Yeah. Let us sing number 542 when we all get to heaven.
sainthood. This today is one of the unusual Sundays because this is actually All Saints Day. Last night was All Hallows Eve. Some people have changed that day. But it was All Hallows Eve because it was the night before All Saints Day. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's unusual because All Saints Day doesn't fall on Sunday very often. And for us to celebrate communion on All Saints Day is, I think, very significant. And I think you'll find that to be true, too. What's important for us to understand is that, as I shared a few moments ago with Lily, is the fact that saints are not some figure sitting on some kind of slab of concrete somewhere, in a church somewhere. Now, it's possible that they were saints, but that's not the definition of a saint. And we're going to see in the next few passages what a saint is considered by the Bible. And first of all, we look at Acts chapter 9. This is a very interesting situation because Saul of Tarsus has just come has just had his experience of being knocked off his horse and blinded. And now, God comes to a man named Ananias and says to Ananias that he is to pray for Paul that he might not only get his sight, but come to recognize just who Jesus is. And so, here comes Ananias' response in the 13th verse of 9th chapter of Acts. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. To your saints in Jerusalem. Ananias had a, had a fear moment because he was going to have to go to this murderer and share with him the good news. But notice what Ananias says. He talks about Saul persecuting the saints in Jerusalem. Well, you don't persecute dead people. Hello. That's right. The saints were considered the very people who had come to trust Jesus mm -hmm. for their salvation who were putting all of their trust in him and were unwilling to do anything else regardless of what their persecution might be. They were saints. Ananias recognizes them as saints. Not only does Ananias recognize them, but Paul does in the 26th chapter of Acts. And that is just what I did in Jerusalem, he's saying. On authority of the chief priests, I put many of the saints in prison, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. The saints, he recognized them as saints. Now, the word saint is a very special word. The word saint means holy ones. Holy ones. And what we need to understand about the saints is that holy ones are not just simply those who are made into a statue somewhere. Holy ones are simply people who have come to a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and are willing to live totally for Him. That's a saint. A saint. There's another situation in Acts where Peter, Peter, traveling all around the country, went to visit the saints in Lydia. Again, the saints. Romans chapter 16, Paul writes, I commend you, our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church of Censorea. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints. A servant of the church. A saint. Are we getting a picture of what a saint really is here? It has nothing to do with what so many people call saints. Romans chapter 1. 
right, Paul's writing to Roman Christians, and he says, to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. One of the things that Paul recognizes is that there's a calling. But didn't Jesus say many are called? Few are chosen? Well, these are the chosen ones, the ones who have chosen Jesus. They're called now to be saints. That's a, such an important concept for us to understand today. In Revelation, the calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. Do you see that? The saints who obey God's commands and remain faithful to Jesus. Obedience and faithfulness. Two key words with regards to the saints that we're celebrating today. They were faithful. They obeyed. They followed the directions that God had given them. They were willing to put everything on the line for Jesus. They obeyed him. They followed him. They were faithful to him. Revelation 17, I saw a woman was drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. My friends, we need to understand something about sainthood. You see, there, there's that expression, and I know I've said this before, there's that expression that I'm a sinner saved by grace. Well, I want you to know I was a sinner saved by grace. Now I'm a saint walking in grace. Hello. Did you hear that? I'm no longer a sinner saved by grace. That was old. That was, that was the past. Now I'm a saint that walks by faith. That's a saint. A saint who's walking by God's grace, God's mercy, God's love, and recognizing that only in Jesus Christ can we have what God has made available to us. Thank you, Jesus. So what makes a saint? We've looked at a couple of things, but I want to look at something else too. You see, some people think that, that they can be a saint by coming to church every Sunday morning. I want you to understand, coming to church... It's what a saint does, but it's not what makes a saint. Hello? Saints do that, but just doing it doesn't make you a saint. Any more than being born in a garage makes you a car? Huh? Or a butcher shop makes you a... Well, let's not go there. But the reality is is that what we do doesn't make us a saint. You can put millions of dollars in the plates. If anybody wants to volunteer, we'll accept it. But that doesn't make you a saint. Yeah. You can do all the good things that you want and that you think you need to do, and a saint will do that. But doing it doesn't make you a saint. Let's look at what really to begin with, makes you a saint. And we find that in John 3, 3. I tell you the truth, Jesus declared. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. You can't even fathom what a saint is unless you've been born again. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son and whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. You see, it's not, in, it's not so, such what we do to begin with. It's what we believe in. I mean, put all of our trust in. That nothing else, nothing else makes any difference to us except that the power of Christ in us mm -hmm. yes. by being born again you, having Jesus. a new kind of relationship no longer the same old person because the Holy Spirit is renewing us and reviving us he 
It says, those who don't believe stand condemned already because he did not believe in the name of God's one and only Son. You see, we can do all kinds of things, but if you don't believe in God's one and only Son, if you don't put your trust in God's one and only Son, it doesn't make any difference what you do. That's Good right. old boys don't make it into heaven. That's right. Only bad old boys who accept God's grace. Amen. Amen. And girls. The reality is, is that we start there. We can never be a saint any other way than by the grace of God in Jesus, as we'll see in a moment. John 1, 12. Yet to all who receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. To all who receive him, who those who believe in his name. Nay. Those who've said, Jesus, come on in, take over my life. Yes. Jesus, Thank transform you, Jesus. me into what you want me to be, a child of God. Can you think of anything better than to be called a child of God? A child of God. A saint before the throne of God. A saint before the throne of grace. A joint heir with Jesus. And if there was any saint in all of creation, Jesus was that person. Yep, amen. And yet we're joint heirs with him. We're brothers to him. Sisters to him. That means that as surely as he was a saint, though he was far more than that, we too as his kin are saints. Hello? Yes. And then we go to something very interesting. The accuser of the brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. And thank you, Jesus. The devil. Yep. And I want us to understand something before I go any further. Notice where, notice where, the, where Satan is. He's before God. Satan is before God. And he's there to accuse us. He's there to accuse us. George, I'm not going to pick on you. I'm going to pick on me. He says, you see that kid, Richard? He's a stinker down there. Do you see what he just did? And you know what God says? God says, no. I didn't see what he just did. And the devil says, why? Don't you see everything? He says, yeah. But I don't see what he just did. Well, then what did you see? He says, when I look at him, I see the blood of my son. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's what it means, you see, to be a child of God. When he looks at me, he sees not what I used to be, but he sees Jesus. Yep. He sees that blood covering. And that leads us to the next part of that text. Because it says, they, the saints, they overcome him, one by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They didn't have to worry. The blood of the, love, the Lamb covered them. And they overcame him. No matter what he was doing against the saints, no matter what he's doing against the saints all over this world, except basically here in this country, all over this world, they overcome him. They stand against him. They says, you can do anything you want to with me because I know where I'm going, because I know who is mine, my, I'm his. Because of the blood of the Lamb. Secondly, they overcome him, not just by the blood of the Lamb, but by the words of their testimony yep. that Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord, Hallelujah. that Jesus is our blood covering, Thank that you. Jesus is our Savior, Thank that you. Jesus has made us saints, that Jesus yep. is our victory. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And then it goes on to say they did not love their lives even so much as to shrink from death. They weren't afraid to death. They weren't afraid to testify in some of the most harshest of situations. They didn't care what Saul of Tarsus was going to do because they knew 
that they were going to be with Jesus. Yep. They didn't care what Nero was going to do. They didn't care what the other monarchs or, yeah, of, 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 of Rome were going to do. They didn't care. They didn't care what Ping, Sean Ping is, King is going to do in China. They don't care. They don't care what they're doing in North Carolina. North, North, yeah, North Carolina. I hope so. In, in, in North Korea. They didn't care. Why? Because Jesus is their answer. Because they're solid in Jesus. Yep. It's because they know that Jesus is their answer. Yep. That Jesus has made them a saint. Yep. They are testifying all over those Muslim countries that Jesus is the way out of all that garbage. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is hope. Jesus is peace. Jesus is joy. Jesus is love. They were not afraid to share Jesus. Blood of the Lamb, word of their testimonies, and not loving lives so much as shrink unto death. See, that's a saint. That's a saint. But it all comes down to Ephesians chapter 2. For it's by grace. For it's by grace. Thank you, Jesus. It's by grace you've been saved. Thank you, Jesus. Through your faith. Yes. It's not yourselves. You can't boast of it. It's a gift of God. Yep. Thank not by the works you've done. Not by the trophies you've won. It's only by grace. But then, after grace comes, then we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared for us in advance for us to do. Mm -hmm. Good works is what saints do because God has transformed us, because God has made us into something special, because God calls us his hagioi, his saints, because God sees in us through the blood of Jesus, his grace at work, and his power for others around us. Yep. Saints, saints, live up to your name. Live up to your calling. Be God's saints. Be it God's way. Pray with me. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you today because you have made your sainthood available to us by the blood of Jesus, by your grace, by your mercy. Father, as we share in communion today, it's because of your grace. We share as saints. We share not because we're perfect, but because your blood, the blood of Jesus has covered us. And as we partake of these elements today, we do indeed declare that we are what we eat, the body of Christ and his blood for the world around us. Oh God, as your saints, may we partake of these elements this day, recognizing that all that Jesus did for us all that he gave up so that we could have it all. And it's all because you loved us. Yes. Help us love others with that gospel of grace in the wonderful name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. So before we share communion, let us sing number 543 when the roll is called up. Yeah.
on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them and he said, Take and eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. In the same way also after supper, he took a cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for these gracious gifts of yours, your gifts of love and grace. May we receive as your saints these special gifts today and give you glory in Jesus' name. Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you.
Will you stand and receive a blessing? May the body of Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith and send us forth as his saints, receiving his grace upon grace in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Love one another.